Hi, I'm Tom, W8JI, and this video is about tuning the AL811H amplifier uh, using a fixed peak drive and using push to talk with a carrier. Uh, to do this, you put the radio in teletype or in FM and adjust the drive power that way and use push to talk so you can release it fast. I designed the AL811 series around 1991 as the cheapest possible medium power single sideband CWA amplifier. It wasn't designed for other modes when it was initially uh, designed. There are updates to the original 811 platforms that help with both reliability and performance. The grid current and the output power are the most important tuning indicators. Watch the grid current while tuning. Don't concentrate on dipping the plate. This isn't 1950, and this isn't a grid-driven tetrode. The requirements before you tune the amplifier are you inspect the capacitor set screws. MFJ leaves them loose a lot of times. You should do an airflow test, and you have to do a diode test to make sure that the uh, meter protection is good. You put the radio on teletype or FM with push to talk. Use a manual tuning chart. Use an RF power output meter. And you also make sure the load is matched. And I have to stress that you have to look at these amplifiers and make sure everything is put together properly and the screws are all tight. Um, doing a quick fan test, a proper fan in the amplifier extinguishes a Bic lighter about one foot out from the exhaust vents. Here's the test. There you see the lighter goes out. And then you move back and relight the lighter and go back in about a foot away from the vents someplace around there it blows the fan out uh, the fan blows the lighter out make sure the meter protection negative diode rail uh, clamp is good I have another video up about that with no drive and the amplifier keyed the grid meter should not track the plate current meter uh, here you go now I'm going to key this amplifier Notice that the plate current meter is moving up and down and the grid current meter is not moving at all. Um, the grid current meter and plate current meter without drive do not move in unison. This indicates that we have a good rail clamp diode and the amplifier is good to operate. So here's uh, an example of a bad rail clamp diode or bad meter protection diode. So when I key this amplifier without any drive you notice that the plate current meter and the grid current meter are both moving about the same amount when you have a bad negative rail clamp meter protection diode the grid meter and plate meter when keying without drive move in unison do not tune the amplifier or use the amplifier this way you have to replace this diode because the amplifier is not going to give you the correct plate or grid current if the amplifier passes the diode test it can be safely tuned. Put the radio on push to talk or use the manually operated transmit push button on the radio. Um, have the radio on FM or on teletype and you're going to watch the grid current in the amplifier and you can watch the power output second and preset the radio to this tuning chart for whatever band you're going to tune on. Uh, this charts in the manual and I know we don't like to use manuals, but sometimes there's some handy information. So as long as the amplifier is put together right, this chart will be good. Okay, I'm going to show you how to tune an amplifier. Um, this one doesn't have a TOF unit, so it doesn't read the peak grid current. It just reads the average grid current. And the, um, I have the amplifier on 40 meters. The radio is on 40 meters. I have the radio set at 100 watts. Here's the radio. Here's the watt meter. There's 100 watts of carrier. I'm going to tune this amplifier at 100 watts of carrier and I'm not going to hurt it. So I put the amplifier on operate. I have the band switch on 40 meters. I looked in the manual and I found the preset settings and I see that on 40 meters the load control is going to be around three or three and a half depending on where you're at in the band
and it also says that the plate control is going to be around 8. So I'll set the con plate control for 8. I'll set the load control for around 3, 3 and a half right in that area. And then um, this is on operate now. It's, it's on the meters on plate current. The meters, uh, the grid current meter reads grid current all the time. And the output's on average power. The radio's at 100 watts. Now this graph is for an AL811H with four tubes and uh, this shows you the optimum grid current for a given amount of drive power. This will vary a little bit uh, from amplifier to amplifier so don't ever take drive power as something that's just absolute. But this is approximately where you should be on grid current for various drive levels. And what I'm going to do is keep my eye on the grid current and we can look at the output power but I'm mostly going to watch the grid current. I'm going to peak the grid current, maximum grid current, by peaking the plate current. If you watch the power meter that's going to also be maximum power. I'm not going to fool around here watching the dip in plate current because a lot of times that's hard to see. So, and you don't need to do that on a grounded grid amplifier. This isn't 1960, and this is not a grid-driven tetrode tube, and we're not really concerned too much about plate current. So here we go. I'm going to key it, keep my eye on the grid current, and peak it. There's peak grid current. Now, that went against the pin. That tells me, and if I would have heard any abnormal noises or anything, I would have quit right away. That tells me the loading control is too far closed because the normal grid current for four 811 tubes, when they're running at maximum output, the normal grid current's about 150 milliamps, and I was all the way against the pin. So I'm going to advance the load control to a higher number that will reduce the grid current. Higher load control setting, less grid current for the same drive. So here we go. That was about 180 mils. That's all the longer I need to key the amplifier. I don't need to sit here and hold it down for uh, 20 seconds or something. But you can see when I key it, it's about 180 milliamps. So now I'm going to advance the load control a little bit more. It's up around four and a half now. That's about 170. A little bit more advanced. 170 still. A little bit more advanced. 160. 160 mils is going to be about optimum. It's going to be around the optimum power output and the optimum grid current. They'll both occur at about the same time when I have about 100 watts of drive. So here we go. See that I'm peaking the plate? The plate control did not move at all. Not one bit. I have 650 watts of output. The plate current's at 600 milliamps, which I didn't watch the plate current while I was tuning. So the plate current's at 600 mils, 625 mils, that's safe. The grid current's at about 160 mils that's safe at high drive and the output's around 650 watts. Watch when I try to get more output by fiddling around with the controls. I just did it in a simple way. Now watch what happens when I try to uh, have more output power by fiddling around with the controls and watching the output power. No real change. I'm right on the, that's right absolutely on the peak and I'm at 155 milliamps. So I've just, I've just barely uh, changed the grid current and I really haven't gotten any more output. Look how long that took instead of just watching the grid meter. Now if I have not enough load control or something's wrong with the antenna or things like that, I'm going to have too much grid current. Bang! It's going to go way up too high. See? If I peak the grid current, 
that is maximum output with peak grid current and I haven't hardly changed the plate current at all it's still just below 600 milliamps that's why plate currents a very poor way to tell how you're tuning a grounded grid amplifier but the grid current is everything and the output power is everything so that's really what you, you want to watch I can tune amplifiers this way every day of the week all week long and not hurt the tubes because I'm not holding the uh, carrier on a long time and I'm doing things quickly and I'm getting to the peak grid current uh, the optimum grid current I should say I'm getting to the optimum grid current very quickly without um, without any uh, hesitation or fiddling around or trying to figure out you know what's going on so again let's let's mess up the controls again so there the controls are messed up again I'm going to go through it one more time and I have a hundred watts of drive and this is an 811H amplifier and what I'm going to do is use the plate control to peak the grid current there's the grid current on the peak now I was set about what the manual told me to set it at I wasn't at some crazy wild setting on the load so it's safe to do this if you if the antenna is a low SWR and if the load control is set to what the manual says you're fairly safe at doing this you're not going to hurt anything but I have too much grid current so what I'll do is I'll advance the loading control to a higher number recheck the grid current down a little bit higher number down a little more higher number and there we go now we're around 160 or 170 mils there's about 160 and that's about optimum typically for four good 811 tubes in this amplifier so I have 160 mils and boom I'm right on the peak of grid current I, I didn't even really need to adjust the plate control because it wound up in the same spot and I have 650 watts of carrier output and I'm doing that with uh, about 1500 volts a little over 1500 volts of plate voltage under carrier conditions well, that's all I had to do that's that's tuning at 100 watts if we tune at 100 watts that means the amplifier can only safely handle 100 watts of drive if we tune at 50 watts it can only safely handle 50 watts of drive so you have to be careful that you load the amplifier heavily enough and you tune at a high enough drive level if you don't tune at the peak drive power that the amplifier is going to see what will happen is you'll splatter and you risk uh, you actually risk damaging the amplifier but you'll have a wide signal from uh, mistuning the amplifier so you always want to tune at whatever you think the absolute peak power you're going to drive the amplifier with that's that's where you want to quit tuning now not everybody wants to run an AL uh, 811H amplifier at um, uh, full power you might want to run something like say a digital mode at less power so if you can reduce the output power but the grid current the optimum grid current will also decrease as you decrease the um, output power so here's a here's a chart or graph that shows uh, output power on this is averaged between two or three different amplifiers that I tested and it shows the output power versus the um, uh, versus the grid current so you can see that as I reduce the output power to lower and lower levels the the grid current uh, becomes less and less now the the caution with this with tuning at low power is if you ever go over the power you tuned at then you start the amplifier becomes nonlinear and starts flat topping and if you do that to an extreme you can arc the plate tuning capacitor or arc the band switch in the amplifier so you really never want to drive the amplifier uh, very much past where you've uh, tuned it at 
and optimize the amplifier. Um, if you, uh, it's just a real, that's the worst thing you can do to an amplifier. So always tune to the absolute maximum peak power that you're going to expect to have in operation. That's the proper place to tune. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope it helps uh, everybody tune their amplifiers a little bit better.